they'll be on the future. since he was a wee little fellow. Um, but what really got him into the hobby is when he received a telescope as a gift from his kids uh, when he retired from his career as a dermatologist. Uh, he originally came here to learn how to use his telescope and then to learn what to look at with his telescope. And now he additionally enjoys just socializing with intelligent people who are into astronomy. Um, that's us. That's right. <laughs> um, so, he is a past uh, president and vice president of this August society. Uh, tonight, he's going to give us a short presentation <coughs> on comparing uh, the sky quality meter, you can see a picture of it there, with an app on a cell phone. John? Thank you, Dale. <coughs> How dark is it? You know, it's so dark. <laughs> so, uh, we often want to know how dark the skies are and how the sky is at one location compared to another. So, there's an app for that. Uh, and there's two ways that you can measure it. One is you can buy a device that's dedicated to just measuring it, called the Sky Quality Meter, and the other is to use an app on your, uh, phone, your smartphone to do it. So first I'll tell you about the Sky Quality Meter. This is a battery-powered gadget, a little larger than a deck of cards. It measures how dark the night sky is at any location in time. It's made by Unihedron. It costs $120 to $350, depending on model and features. The higher price models have continuous monitoring and Ethernet connectivity. So the high price model, you can just leave it out and take a reading back home from your computer what the sky is. The lower price model, you hold it up to just get a reading for right now. So you point this, uh, first you have to hire an alien to hold it. <laughs> then you point this device at the sky, usually at the zenith, press a button, it beeps after a couple seconds to tell you it's done, and then you read the result on its digital display. You can also press and hold the button a second time to get a temperature reading. There's a couple different models. Uh, it shows your 80 degrees or 120 degrees of uh, sky that you're going to measure the darkness of. So you can choose which model. I'll talk about the meaning of the numbers in a couple minutes, but first, in case you don't own a sky quality meter and can't borrow one from one of the club members who owns one, I'll tell you about a cheaper alternative, an app for your smartphone. The Dark Sky Meter app is an app for iPhones. It doesn't work on iPads and not available for Android phones. It costs 99 cents. You open the app, cover the camera opening on your iPhone, press the dark button, wait a few seconds for it to take a dark reading, and the iPhone vibrates to tell you it's a dot. Then you point the camera at the sky, usually the zenith to measure the darkest part of the sky. Press the sky button, wait a few more seconds, and the phone tells you that it's done taking its reading. And then the result shows on the screen, and all the screens use red on black to preserve your night vision. So what do those numbers mean? Just like for the sky quality meter, the numerical reading on the dark sky meter app is in MPSAS, magnitude per square arc second. You can convert this to something we're more familiar with, naked eye limiting magnitude, with this complicated formula. I put that formula into an Excel spreadsheet to do all the conversions on the following slides. But basically, lower numerical readings mean lower limiting magnitude, lower darkness, brighter skies. I did comparison testing using the Ford Club sky quality meter side by side with the dark sky meter app on my iPhone. And I tested it at multiple locations. 
Each of these readings that I'm going to show you is an average of three consecutive readings I took within five minutes, because there's slight variation from one reading to the next. And I did them all when there was no moon out in the sky. So here's my uh, table of the readings. As you can see, I took readings at my house in Farmington Hills, at the Great Lakes Stargaze in Gladwell, Michigan, at Astronomy at the Beach at Kensington Park, at our own club's Stargate Observing Site, at a Maui Beach Park, a Maui Condo parking lot, on the Lanai, which is like a balcony sticking out from a Maui Condo facing out into the dark ocean, and at the summit of Haleakala, which is a 10,000 foot location uh, on Maui that's the darkest place I've seen. So some of the readings, I'm not going to read you all these numbers, but for just an example, in my house, the meter reads 18.16 and the app reads 17.65, so according to the meter, at my house, the limiting magnitude, you can see, is 4.1. And according to the app, the limiting magnitude in my house is 3.7. So the difference is about 2.8%. So there's a slight variation between them. And then you can also see from the chart the different darkness we have. Uh, our Stargate observing site is pretty good at 19.66 or 18.62, depending on whether you believe the uh, meter or the app. And the darkest place I've seen top of Haleakala Volcano, 10,000 feet on Maui, 21.51 for the meter, 21.02 for the app, or 2.3% difference. So the dark sky meter app usually leads a little lower, translating to a limiting magnitude that's an average of half a magnitude lower, meaning it reads the sky is not quite as dark as the sky quality meter. But the relative comparisons are about the same, meaning a place that the meter says is darker is generally also darker according to the app. So I think the main thing we're interested in is, is it darker here or is it darker there? And that's what you can tell regardless of which one of these you use. It's not shown here, but I also found the meter gives slightly more consistent readings than the app. And the app is more affected by light cutting in from the side. So I think that uh, when I use the camera on my iPhone to take the reading, it's picking up a lot of light from the sides, whereas the actual device is more focused. There's a couple additional features on the app. At the bottom of the screen, the dark side meter app tells you the time of sunset, the time darkness starts, the time of sunrise, the time darkness ends, the moon phase, and the device angle, how you're pointing the device. The darkness start and end refers to astronomical twilight. The app also shows icons in various colors representing how dark the sky is in various places based on past user reports. It's not a real-time report. A handy thing about the app is you can keep a list of your own readings where it will record the date, the time, the location, and the moon phase of each reading. So you don't have to jot it down on pen and paper. Clicking on any of the readings gives you a map showing where you took that reading. There's also a weather page on the app that gives you predictions for today and for the next three days at eight different times of each day for the percentage cloud cover, seeing, <coughs> transparency, and temperature for whatever location you're at when you look at the app. Well, everyone's entitled to my opinion, so here it is. If you can borrow a sky quality meter from a club member who owns one, or if you don't have an iPhone, then use a sky quality meter. It's slightly more consistent, and it doesn't require you to own an iPhone. If you can't borrow a sky quality meter, and or if you own an iPhone, then the dark sky meter app for 99 cents does the job a lot more cheaply, and with a few handy extra features. More advice. If you can get to Maui, <laughs> observe at the top of Haleakala Volcano. It's only 4,421 miles from here. The limiting magnitude is 6.4. And best of all, current and future presence of the wasp, as shown in this picture, actually observed <laughs> the tree. Vice presidents of the wasp observed. <laughs> and future presidents. <clears throat> There's Dale Pardon. Everybody's doing it. There's Bill Beers out there with me. So come on over. Here's John Lyons, also up there at the top of Haleakala with me. One thing I have to say about observing at the top of Haleakala, any place else, when you point the meter or your phone at the zenith, you get quite a different reading than if you point it at the horizon. But not so on Haleakala. It's so dark there, the stars are right down to the horizon, and you can get just as dark a reading pointing right to the horizon. Now, if you can't get to Maui, the best place to observe around here is at the Great Lakes Stargates. This is an event we have in Gladwin, Michigan, 
Every September, we usually get about 200 people from uh, astronomy clubs all over the Midwest to come out there. You can see a few of our club members there from past years in this photos. The distance is only 170 miles, so it's a little closer to Maui. You don't have to drive up a dark, winding road up the mountain to get there. It's warmer than Maui, even though it can be pretty cold there in September. But it's warmer than it is at the top of 10,000 feet on Maui. And the limiting magnitude is 6.0, which is still pretty good, at least if you're looking at the zenith. So that's my advice for you. That's it.